Welcome back to High Stakes. Today, we will be discussing the following MLB matches that is happening on Wednesday, August 16, 2023. We will be providing our team, total and prop picks for the day. Before we get started, please remember to subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications so you don't miss any of our videos. If you want access to our premium picks, you can check out our Patreon page. You can find the link to our Patreon page in the description and comments section below. Arizona Diamondbacks vs Colorado Rockies. Take Arizona money line and here is why. The Diamondbacks jumped out to an early lead, scoring two runs over the first two innings. Christian Walker added a two-run shot in the sixth, which accounted for the final two runs for Arizona, who finished with just five hits on the day. Walker was the lone Diamondback to log multiple hits, and he finished with three RBI. Merrill Kelly got the start and retired 11 batters over six innings, while allowing two runs. As of this writing, Arizona has not elected who will take the mound to start Game 3. Looking at the Diamondbacks pitching staff on the whole, they sit bottom 5 in overall ERA. Arizona has hurled pretty well on the road, holding opponents to their worst collective batting average against the Diamondbacks. However, during daytime games that average has ticked up slightly. On top of that, Arizona pitchers hold a win rate of 45.7% during the day, which is their lowest of any split. Strikeouts, or lack thereof, have been few and far between, but Arizona has managed to throw their highest strikeout rate when hurling away from home. August has been rough sledding for really anyone on Arizona's roster, and the bullpen has been no exception. Opponents have hit a combined .275 at the plate, the highest monthly posting for the Arizona pitching staff, and they've managed just two wins in 12 games. Arizona enters this contest with a run differential of minus 24, which lands them right at 20th in the league. The Diamondbacks currently hover right around the top 10 in overall batting average, but they've posted their softest hitting rates both away from home and during the day this season. While they haven't always seen the ball well on the road, the Diamondbacks have amassed over half their homers when away from home this season. This does bode well for the offense, which sits around the bottom 10 in overall home run rate. The top 10 batting average has been aided by the third-ranked strikeout average boasted by Arizona. What's more, they've been able to extend those hits in large part by generating extra base hits at the 8th highest clip in the league. This hasn't necessarily generated runs, however. The Diamondbacks hit bottom 10 in their ability to drive runners home, and this was evident in July as they finished with their lowest run total, falling 50 runs shy of their previous monthly low. These woes have carried into August with the Diamondbacks averaging just 2.67 runs per game and hitting .217 at the plate. The Diamondbacks have experienced a significant decline in their performance and now find themselves in a favorable opportunity for a strategic investment as they go up against the struggling Rockies at Coors Field. Gomer's vulnerability has been evident both in his home games and during daytime matchups. This trend has continued in August, with opponents maintaining a batting average of .313 against him this month. Furthermore, the Diamondbacks have displayed a tendency to perform better on the road throughout this season. Compounding this advantage, the Rockies have shown their weakest performance during daytime games, and a significant portion of their home runs have been achieved in afternoon matchups. Given these factors, opting for the Diamondbacks seems like the prudent choice. Take the over 12.5 runs. And here is why Gomer has been hittable in nearly any scenario this season, and at home, he has allowed foes to hit their strongest collective batting average. Arizona has found better success on the road, and over half their homers have come in that setting. The Diamondbacks pitching staff has struggled of late, allowing the opposition to hit .273 in August. Colorado has hit their best at home this season, and the low care rate of the Diamondbacks bullpen should put the wind to Colorado's bats. Look for the total to go over the number at the hitter's park. Houston Astros vs Miami Marlins. Take Houston Astros money line. And here is why. The Astros played well over the past week, and they've won five of their last eight games. They are 3.5 games behind Texas in the Al West standings, and will try to reduce the gap with a win over the Marlins, which will give them their sixth win in their last nine games. Houston is averaging 4.84 runs per game. Their .251 batting average is 13th in the league. Their .324 on base percentage is also 13th, while their .416 slugging percentage is 15th. Kyle Tucker has been the big bat for the Astros. He leads the team with a .294 batting average, 22 home runs, and 88 RBI. Houston's pitching has been good, with the team giving up 4.16 runs per game. Opponents have a .240 batting average against the Astros, which is 8th in the league. Their 3.780 RA is 3rd, while their 1.26 whip is 11th. In his last start, Verlander gave up 6 hits and 3 runs in 6 innings, leading to an 11-3 win over the Angels. They will need another solid start from him if they want to get the win. The Astros have won 5 of their last 8 games, and 3 of their last 5 road games. 
They are playing well offensively and scored 20 runs in their last four road games. Expect them to play well offensively in this game because they've done a great job batting against left-handers and Luzardo has struggled on the mound in recent starts, giving up 15 runs in his last three starts. He gave up nine runs in his last three starts against the Astros and will have a hard time slowing them down in this game. The Marlins have won five of their last six games. They are also playing well offensively and scored 16 runs in their last three home games. But, they will struggle offensively in this game because Verlander has done a great job on the mound in recent starts, giving up six runs in his last four starts. He gave up five runs in his last three road starts, and with Houston having the seventh best bullpen in the league, they will keep Miami's offense in check. Go with Houston to cover the money line. Our total pick is over. The Marlins also played well over the past week, and they've won five of their last six games. They are currently handing on to the last wild card spot in the NL with a one-game lead over the Cubs and will try to increase their lead with another win over the Astros, which will give them their sixth win in their last seven games and the series win. Miami is averaging 4.08 runs per game. Their .262 batting average is fourth in the league. Their .317 on base percentage is 17th, while their .402 slugging percentage is 18th. Luis Arez leads Miami with a .366 batting average, while Jorge Soler leads the team with 29 home runs and 63 RBI. Miami's pitching has been good, with the team giving up 4.38 runs per game. Opponents have a .244 batting average against the Marlins, which is 14th in the league. Their 4.170 ERA is 15th, as is their 1.28 whip. In his last start, Lizardo gave up 9 hits and 7 runs in 3.1 innings, leading to a 9-4 loss to the Yankees. They will need a significantly better effort from him if they want to win this game. Cleveland Guardians vs Cincinnati Reds. Take the Reds to cover with the run line. And here is why. The Guardians are 58-62 this season. They are currently in second place in the American League Central Division. They are four games back of the Twins which leads the division. Cleveland is 8.5 games back of a wild card spot, meaning that the only way Cleveland makes the playoffs is via winning the division. Cleveland has won three of their last five games and four of their last seven. In their last game, the Guardians defeated the Reds 3-0 on Tuesday, August 15. Cole Calhoun hit two RBIs and Stephen Kwan added another RBI for Cleveland to take the win. Logan Allen pitched six innings and allowed zero earned runs and just four hits in the win. On Wednesday, the Reds are set to begin with Abbott on the mound and he has maintained a consistent performance throughout this season. Specifically, he boasts an ERA of 2.75 in home games and an impressive ERA of 0.75 when facing teams from the American League. With Abbott's capabilities, it's anticipated that he will effectively neutralize the Cleveland team, which has encountered difficulties on offense during this year. Evidently, they have recorded the fourth lowest number of runs and hold the record for the fewest home runs. Given this context, it's unlikely that Cleveland will be able to match the scoring momentum of the Reds. Additionally, the Reds will field Syndergaard as their starter, marking his fourth appearance in a Cleveland uniform. Unfortunately for Syndergaard, he has struggled with an elevated ERA of 9.21 in road games this year, making him a prime target for the Reds to capitalize on with home runs. Highlighting the Reds' prowess, they currently rank seventh in terms of total runs scored this season, which undoubtedly positions them for victory on Wednesday. For our total pick take the under on Wednesday. And here is why. The Reds are 62-59 overall this season. They are four games back of first place in the National League Central Division. Cincinnati is currently in third place as they try to chase down the Brewers for the top spot. The Reds are also one game back of a spot in the wild card. The Reds have lost four of their last six games entering Wednesday night. In their last game, the Reds lost 3-0 to the Guardians on Tuesday, August 15. The Reds finished with six hits in the game but could not muster a run in the game. Graham Ashcraft pitched seven innings and allowed three earned runs in the loss, 